great tool for teachers who are seeking a way to find and organize content that will benefit student learning. My name is Lucy Gray and I'd like to show you some of the features of Participate Learning and why I think this might be a great tool for you to incorporate into your workflow. Uh, I am logged into Participate Learning at participate.com and you're going to see a couple things on the front page that are important. On the right hand side you'll see your account uh, where you can uh, view your dashboard, your profile, your bookmarks, and start new collections. You can also see uh, a link to their new Participate Chat feature, which is really exciting and I'll get to in a few minutes. And you can also search for uh, any kinds of resources in their database or browse by topic, grade level, etc. There are also collections that have been created by uh, community members, including designated experts by Participate Learning. You'll see some of those featured on the front page too to get a sense of, of what a collection looks like. I'm going to click on this one um, right now by Wes Hall just to kind of give you an idea of what a, a collection looks like. Uh, Wes Hall um, prepared this. He found apps in particular, it looks like, that he uses and really likes and recommends. And he has a nice long list here. Um, he's tagged them by keywords. Uh, you can subscribe to it, you can share to it, you can add these all to your own collections if you'd like to. Um, and, you know, or you can add them individually to a collection if you'd like to as well. It also tells you if they're, pr if they're free or if they're a website or except, you know, lots of details are here, lots of descriptions and that sort of thing. So this is what a collection looks like. And, um, and the beauty of social media and tools like this is that we're learning from each other and sharing our finds and together we can do more. So I'm a big fan of these kinds of collections for, uh, for making life easier for all educators. Um, you can make your own collection by cr clicking here in the middle of the page of the front page where it says create collection or again you can go up to your ID uh, picture and make a new collection as well. I'm going to go to my dashboard to show you what I ha what collections I've made so far. Um, you can see that I can edit my profile here. I have notifications from people I'm connected to. Here's a link to participate chats and, and transcripts I've made there. And then here are all my collections that I've made so far. And I can always delete them. I can always make them public or private. Lots of different things I'll get into in a minute. And then again, you'll see some featured collections here that might be useful to you as well. So this is my own personal dashboard. It's not public. It's just my starting place for where all my stuff is, okay? Right now, I'm looking for resources that are related to, um, uh, what have I been looking at? Computer science. So I'm going to start out and look for uh, coding apps and resources, and you're going to see lots of things come up. I can see collections that have been made by people. I can see various resources, including websites and apps and other kinds of um, assets, okay? And I can see if they've been rated and if they've been rated or not by a vetted uh, participate learning expert, okay? When I find something that I like, I can add it to an existing collection or I can create a new collection and uh, add it to that on the fly. I'm going to add this to my computer science for kids collection and then I can also go look at that collection once I've done I'm finished adding a resource so this is a collection that I just made for demonstration purposes um, you can see I have about 10 different things listed here and the last one I just added as as I was doing this demo okay so this is a collection I've created I can also add stuff that's not listed already in Participate Learning. If I know of another website or I have a file I want to share of, um, you know, a worksheet or something, I can add it here. I can also link to uh, YouTube videos or 
uh, Dropbox links or anything else too that may be beneficial to people uh, or to myself. The great thing about collections is now that you can add collaborators. So if you're team teaching or you're working in a departmentalized situation and you want to invite your colleagues to work on a collection of materials for students together, you can do it now. And one of the features of inviting collaborators is that you can have private discussions now on the right hand side of a collection when you're logged in and the public will not see this but you can kind of go back and forth about your collection and, and discuss discuss it as needed. Um, I can also change the privacy on this. I can make it public. I can just give it to people with a link or I can make it so that I'm the only person that can see it. That's really useful to teachers who may start a collection and feel it's not ready for prime time and want to make it private until they, they have the collection just right. So um, just realize that there's a lot of different features here in terms of customizing this. Um, I do recommend that you probably want to put a description in here. So I'm just going to call this, this is a demo collection created by Lucy Gray. And now I have a little bit of a description in here and um, it's good to go. And I can share this with anybody um, via a link or email or I can embed it on a website. I can also use social media to share it with other people as well. So for me to organize and manage my collections, I need to go back to my dashboard and I can see all my collections in one fell swoop from my dashboard. So that's a little bit about how you uh, look for resources and you organize them and you put them into collections. In my next uh, video, I'm going to show you how to use um, Participate Learning's new bookmarking feature, which I think is really amazing. So stay tuned for that next video. Thanks.